Hello, do you require all the analysis you need to achieve the very highest marks in exploring Love's Philosophy by Percy Shelley, but haven't got hours to waste doing it? Well, look no further. The Aimless videos provide you with all the information you require to achieve the very highest marks when using this poem in your writing. So without further ado, let's begin. So what's the basic meaning? What's this poem basically about? Well, the poem is an attempt by a romantic lover to argue that the lovers should sexually interact. The speaker uses the example of elements of nature mingling with one another. This suggests that it is only natural that they do the same thing. As all things in nature are created by God, it must therefore follow that by replicating nature together, they're performing God's will. Okay, so what about the context we can use then? Well, Shelley, a first generation romantic poet, agreed with the basic notion that nature and things within that are truly positive reflections of the power of God. This was in part a view cemented by what romantic poets saw as a poor attempt to replicate this by mankind as seen in the smoggy and disease-ridden cities of the Industrial Revolution. Shelley, in a similar fashion to Byron, was just as famous for his relationships as he was for his poetry. In terms of the form of this poem, well, the title of the work suggests that the viewpoint expressed within the poem is not the speaker's own, but is actually the view or philosophy of love itself making it seem more righteous in some way and right. Using the lyric form helps to highlight that this is a speaker who is highlighting strong feeling or emotion. The single speaker throughout, leaving some suggest that this poem is actually a dramatic monologue, helps to create the sense of persuasion, but also the unrelenting pursuit of the speaker. So when we move on and we look at the structure of the poem, well, both stanzas use the same structure points of argument followed by a question to the listener. This not only helps to establish the argument being made by the speaker, but the repetition can reflect a dogged pursuit of the potential lover, making the speaker now seem somewhat desperate by the latter part of the poem. The intermingling of the feminine and masculine rhyme reflects the mingling of the two genders that the speaker wishes to occur. The alternative rhyme scheme also demonstrates the present separation between the two. And then, Concluding the poem with a direct question means that the reader never discovers whether the advances of the speaker were actually successful. When well, you think about the language of this poem then, well, the use of natural imagery such as river and mountains helps to reinforce the majesty of love by conjoining all things within it. The use of lexes such as sweet and heaven reinforces the positive tone the speaker places on sexual interaction. Lord Divine indicates that the union of man and woman is a thing affirmed by God. This suggests that the listener is, in a playful sense, singing against God by not interacting in that way. And finally, clasp is usually in the second stanza to highlight the physical outcomes the speaker wishes to have based on their argument. So there we are. That is the structure, the form, the language, the context, the basic meaning, everything you now need. What you need to be doing with that information is practicing using it in your essays. So thank you and good luck.